Welcome to Global Altar Platform, a platform that exists to bring believers back to their Bibles and prepare them to become efficient in the kingdom of God. You can watch our previous and current episodes on our YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram channels. The channels are YouTube and Facebook, The Word with Levin. Instagram is Global Altar Platform. Please turn on notifications to join us live every Saturday by 9 p.m. Listen to our audio messages on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts by simply searching for The Word with Levin. For inquiries, please call 0903-470-0607. Send an email to info at globalautoplatform.com or visit our website on www.globalautoplatform.com. Join me as I welcome your host, Dr. Levin Damisa. Father, we thank you, we bless you, Lord. We appreciate you today. Thank you, Lord, tonight as we look into your word. Father, we will our understanding and let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we discussed something some time ago on the silent noise of pastors, and we got good feedback from our wide viewership all over the world. The one question that came up was Did Christ ever suffer burnout? He experienced challenges. And we see from the scriptures in Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, verse 12. So now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to eat, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to him, Let no man eat from you ever again. And the disciples heard it. So Christ may not have suffered burnout, but we see that Christ was hungry. He needed to eat from a tree. Of course, when he found nothing, he caused that thing. And now, if you go, if you follow me again to the book of John, chapter 4, the popular story of the Samaritan woman, John chapter 4, verse 6. Now, it says, and Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, tired as he was from his journey, sat down to rest by the well. It was then about the sixth hour, about noon. You know, presently a woman of Samaria came along to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. The Bible says disciples have gone to buy food. They did have food. The disciples of Jesus Christ have gone to buy food. And Christ was thirsty, he was weary, he was tired, and he was waiting by the well for the disciples to come. At first, he needed to rest. If not, he would have followed the disciples to the market to go and buy food. But he waited for them. It was that encounter. But he saw opportunity, despite his hunger and thirst. When the woman of Samaritan came, Christ saw an opening to reach to the Samaritan nation. So it goes to say that Jesus Christ, as man God, was not a superman. That's why he's our perfect example, our perfect high priest, as he continues to intercede for us. So this morning, this night, we are going to look at another topic related to it. You can see my steps on my neck. We are going to look at silent head crisis in churches. There are silent head crisis in churches. Well, we may say, why not make it a global thing? Yes, but why we are looking at churches that we are looking at Christians. Because in this end time, many of us are involved in several things, and that alone is causing a lot of health crisis that we can no longer be silent about. We can't be silent to the health crises that are happening around us. We can't be silent. Now, when you look at the silent noise of pastors, you find out that the same thing also applies to the entire body of Christ. There's so much criticism among believers, people criticizing other people's work, people criticizing what God is doing in other ministry. And whether we like it or not, this is going to have effect or implication on the health of the church as a whole, and to some extent, individuals that make up the church would ought not to be. 
Now we see people are having crisis of time management. Too much, too, too many activities in the church, too many busyness. You know, people are getting so busy with the work. And many a time, homes are suffering. These are things we want to look at in the next few minutes to create awareness and also to get us back to the Bible so that we can begin to imitate Christ as our perfect example. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, if financial struggles is seen as a challenge to pastors, and I also tell you that members are also going through financial struggles. But you see, the word of the kingdom belongs to the children of God. The word of the nations belong to believers. So we need to understand what God is saying. We need to trust God. We need to have understanding of the desire of God for the church. Now, if you look at studies concerning pastors by extension to Christian workers, when you see about 1,700 pastors leaving ministry every month, you see 90% 90, 90 of them reporting to being overworked as full time. You see about 50% being unable to meet demands of the job. Now you begin to see that in present day church, especially in South Saharan Africa, most of the workers graduate to become pastors. And what do you expect? That when you have unresolved issue at the level of followership, they are going to follow us to the level of leadership. And so when you have a, a, a bleeding pastor, now it means that they are going to have an issue with the church, with the people who are being mentored. Now, when you look at Psalm 23, it's a popular psalm, the shepherd psalm. Before we come to our scripture reference, in Psalm 23, it says, verse 1, Say, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Now, when you look at this psalm, we are trusting God that one day we are able to have an exposition on Psalm 23 alone. But tonight we will see that the Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That means the shepherd provides for the sheep. He makes them to lie down in green pasture for nourishment, for refreshment, for refreshing of their soul, spirit, and body. Now, the ministry of Jesus Christ is the ministry to the total man. The ministry of Jesus is to the total man. That is why when the multitude followed Jesus Christ to the wilderness, the Bible says, after staying with Christ for three days, he said, they need to go. The disciples say, Master, send them away. Christ said, no, we can't do that. We have to get something to feed them. Why? Because he said the journey is far. He says, please, they faint on the way. So Christ is also interested on the physical head of his church. Christ is interested on the head of believers, on the head of his workers. And that is why God himself is Jehovah Rapha. He said, I am the Lord that I hear that day. That means God does not want diseases to reign among his people. God does not want sickness to, to, to paralyze his children. God does not want you to be held down by sickness. God does not want believers to be tied down by afflictions. And that is why tonight the word is coming to us that God wants, there are some things, there are some principles that God wants us as Christian workers to imbibe so that we can serve God with heavy bodies revive spirits and enlighten soul. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, we're going to be looking at capacity of Christians that are given to task because we see many many believers coming down with head crisis and when you ask people, say, oh, I'm a worker in the church, I'm doing a lot of things in the body of Christ, yet the head crisis are, are, not, are, not, are not reducing. Why? Let's look at the book of Judges. Judges chapter... 8 verse 18. Now, the book of Judges, we're looking at the story of a man called Gideon who was a leader, a warrior, and he was a man that led the children of Israel in their own turbulent time. The Bible says, And he said to Zeba and Zamuna, What kind of men were they whom you killed at Tabor? So they answered, As you are, so were they. Each one resembled the son of a king. 
Then he said, They were my brothers, the sons of my mother. As the Lord lives, if you had let them live, I will not kill you. And he said to Jephthah, his firstborn, Rise, kill them. But the youth would not draw his sword, for he was afraid because he was still a youth. So Zebra and Zamuna said, Rise yourself and kill us, for as a man is, so is his strength. So Gideon arose and killed Zeba and Zamuna, and took the crescent ornament that we had on their camel's back. Now I'm look here, I'm going to look at capacity of Christian workers. We're looking at silent noises among Christ, head Christ among Christian workers. The first thing we identify here is that many believers' head is, 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 is being threatened because of being overshadowed with tasks that they are not prepared for. Many believers are given tasks that they are not prepared for. And because they are overwhelmed, it affects their performance. Because they are overwhelmed with the tasking that they have been given, many are resorting to fleshly effort. Many are resorting to human ways, to fleshly ways to do the things of God. But you see that no man can do the things of God by human capacity alone. No man can do the work of God by your human reasoning. You need to depend on God. And when you not depend on your strength to make impact, to do those extra things that you are called to do, you see yourself falling down, suddenly falling down behind the headlines. In the places we read, when Jeff, when Gideon told Jephthah his firstborn to kill Zeba and Zamuna, as obtained in those days, the Bible said the boy was a youth, he couldn't draw the sword, he chickened out the youth today language. His liver failed because he wasn't prepared for the task that he was being asked to go into. The same thing we are noticing that when you put workers into tasks they're not prepared for, they tend to break down. Some chicken out. And because some cannot well, pull out like documented for pastors, some change churches. Some people change church, they change their denomination loyalty because so they can go to a bigger church and hide in the crowd. Some because they are not prepared for the tax, they get so drained and exhausted that they need to run to the river where the river is flowing for refreshing. So we are challenging leadership of the church that before tasks are assigned to people, they, they more, people must be trained. Few, that's why Jesus Christ told his disciples, he said, tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. The work of God needs the power of God to be carried out in God's way. When the work of God is not done by the when, when God's work is not done in, by God's power, when flesh take over, you cannot go far. And that is why God is encouraging us tonight by the word of God that believers need to be, to be built. Your spiritual resistance, your spiritual capacity need to be developed by depending on the Holy Spirit so that you don't get overwhelmed. Now, what are some of those things that can actually be physical health challenges that can hinder the work of the church? We have common health issues that have been suffered in the church. We have ulcers, we have headaches, we have lack of sleep, good sleep, insomnia, sleeplessness among Christians. I have to have some patient who will say, I've tried every drug, I cannot sleep. I say, man, you need to depend on God. Many people are not sleeping because they are multitasking. Many people also are into self-medication. As a doctor, I'm saying here about the spirit of the living God that there are principles of enjoying divine health as a believer. Apart from the daily confession of God's word, there's a need for us to understand the law of rest, the law of stress management, the law of not taking too much tasks at a time. Many people are dropping down, many people are getting frustrated, many people are getting exhausted, and many homes are coming in disarray because the, 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 the pressure of the work in the shop is extending to homes. We got return from a couple's retreat where we hear a lot of teachings, a lot of uh, information, and you won't believe me that 
it, the, 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 the epidemic of broken homes is in the church. And when you look at it many a time, it's between Christ, both couples could be Christian workers. And so a lot of pressure are on the mental health of the people in the church. And what do you expect? They are unable to serve effectively in where God has called them to. That is why we are saying to now that you need to look out for one another's welfare in the body of Christ. Many Christians are fighting depression, a state of persistent sadness. Many have lost the joy of living. Many have lost the joy of their life. Many are no longer comfortable serving the Lord. Many are fighting with hypertension. Many people are eating a lot of junk food because of pressure, because of running for food, because of trying to make ends meet. Many people are suffering. And so tonight, and also that people are battling with cancers in the body of Christ. We are sending so that you can channel your prayers in the church so that we can begin to look out for one another's welfare in the body of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 7. What should we do? 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. Say, for indeed, when we came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we had trouble on every side. Outside were conflict, inside were fears. Nevertheless, God, who comforted downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not only by his coming, but also by the consolation with which he was comforted in you, when he told us of your earnest desire, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I will just give more. This is Apostle Paul affirming to the church of Corinthians that they were a support system for his ministry. The church, as of today, is lacking the, the social support that was prominent in the New Testament church, that was prominent in the, in the first century of Christianity. Many churches are doing very well. Mega churches are into many programs, many corporate social responsibilities are taking place across the board. Scholarships are being given. Foreign missions are being sponsored. We praise the Lord. God is doing so much through mega churches. But I want you to look beyond the mega church with lesser churches. And you know also that in a big church, in, 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 the, in, in a mega church, you can see somebody battling loneliness inside a crowd. There are many persons because of wrong, because of wrong perception, because of fear of being misunderstood, they are not able to share their health challenges. But tonight I'm saying by the Spirit of God that there's a ban in Gilead. And that you have access to God in prayers on your knees to ask God for divine healing. Because God wants us to have healthy bodies to do what? To serve Him. Apostle Paul was not silent. He spoke up when he had challenges. Many Christians are not speaking up. We are saying, speak up. There's no point dying in silence. The pastor has their own challenges. The pastor may not be able to attend to every need in the church. It will break down. It will burn out. And we are saying that pastors should not suffer burnout. out. So as believers, you need to look out for one another's welfare by establishing an effective social support system. It's very important. Because the ministry of Jesus was centered on the spirit, soul, and body of the church of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, believers cannot shy away from supporting brethren because there is blessings. There are blessings inherent in supporting brethren. Now, what are some of those struggles that people go through? We have a lot of financial struggles which can come as a result of location of the church. There are some churches in rural areas that what we call waste in urban areas are treasures in rural areas. God is calling on each and everyone hearing me tonight to look beyond your comfort zone, look beyond your church, look beyond your mega church, look beyond your city church, and look beyond where you are and ask God for direction 
to areas that you need to impart to build the life of the brethren. Because Jesus said something. Christ said, if, if you do it to any list of my brethren, you know, in the book of Matthew, when Christ was saying, so you tell the goat, I was hungry, you didn't visit me. I was thirsty, you didn't give me a drink. I was in prison, you didn't visit me. I was sick, you didn't give me medication. You know, the people said, when did we see you sleep, sick, in prison, test, hungry, and we didn't feed you? You know why? They saw people hungry. They saw people thirsty. They saw people in prison. But they never see that they, those people deserve their attention. Because they didn't have the garment of mega church around them. They didn't have the cloak around them. So they didn't say anything unusual about them. That's why they ignore them. Christ now said, no. And as much as you didn't do that to any of them, it is me you didn't do it also. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Now, there are many people who are having health crisis because of many, many people are so ambitious in the church. Many believers have a lot of ambition. Ambitions founded on wrong theology. You can have everything at the same time. So many people are in the, in the right race. Many believers, I'm sharing you with a burden because many people are into many projects at the same time. Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Many believers are seeking every other thing with, uh, with Christ to be added. No, you can't put the horse before the car. The car before the horse. Many people are seeking every other thing and they want Christ to be added. No, the principle of God is seeking for the kingdom of God and every other thing shall be added to you. We've heard of testimony of people driving and sleeping on the steering because of exhaustion. Your sleep health is deteriorated, deteriorating because of lack of adequate rest. The Bible says, as believers, we need to take adequate care of our body. It's our responsibility. It is your responsibility as a believer to see that you do not allow ambition to push you into health crisis. Many people are into many businesses, and because of the time we see ourselves, we find ourselves, many people are looking for multiple streams of income. It's very good to be hardworking. Many multiple streams of income. But the Bible says, I wish above all things that you so prosper and be in heart. God does not want your head to fail in pursuit of prosperity. That is why God wants us to understand that you need not to get involved in many projects at the same time. Because of that, many people are having hypertension. The hypertension is there. Many people are so confused. And when you engage in too many activities, your spiritual health begins to go down. And when that happens, what you experience is that you no longer enjoy the presence of God. You feel lonely, you feel dejected, and that period, you become a prey to the enemy. Your spiritual immunity goes down because you no longer have time for the war. No time for prayers, no time for Bible study, no time for evangelism because you are involved in too many projects. And when you do that, what happens to you? Emptiness comes in. And when emptiness comes in, the devil can begin to torment their life with unfulfilled dreams. They will begin to torment their life with pain and, with pain and sorrow. If you know what's happening, depression takes over. So brethren, we are saying tonight that God wants us to do what? To take care of one another. The head of the church is important in this end time. Now, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. 2 Timothy verse 12, 1 verse 12. He said, For this reason, I also suffer these things, nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, <clears throat> and I am persuaded I am able to keep what I've committed unto him until that day. Verse 14, he says, That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Ghost who dwells in you. Now, say this you know. 
that all those in Asia have turned away from me, among whom are phygenous and homogeneous. The Lord grant mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he arrived in Rome, he sought me out very zealously and found me. The Lord grant to him that he may find mercy from the Lord in that day. And you know very well how many ways he ministered to me at Ephesus. Brethren, I want to task us tonight. There are people that need to be sick out. There are people that used to come to your church, you no longer come because of the pressures of life. Some of them are deep in health crisis. Some of them are languishing in pain. Some homes are on the verge of broken down. Some marriages are about to scatter. The Lord is calling on you and I to seek her. The Bible says in the end time, that men shall be called lovers of themselves. And that is happening right now. Nobody cares for one another. People no longer care for other people. People just mind their business. In the name of, I don't want to be busy body. If I am broke, it's my business. No, sir. If you are dying, you can't be your business because you are a member of the church of Jesus Christ, a man that Christ died for. If Christ has died for you, we need to seek you out. We are saying tonight that God is counting, is looking for many onisophorums. God is counting on people to seek out people who are no longer, you don't see them in the church, many people are lost in the crowd. I thank God for churches that have effective cell system. I thank God for churches that promote church houses. But you see, if, 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 even in the midst of that, so people still sleep out. It's our duty to seek them out. For the, when Christ was praying in the book of John 15, 16, 17, he said, those that you're giving to me, none is lost except the son of Patricia. God is calling us to preserve the fruit of harvest. If there's any mandate that I receive from God for the global pillar ministry is preserving the harvest. That's why our ministry is to the church of Jesus. To get men back to their Bible that those things that we need, we, we are doing before, those visitation, those phone calls, those letters we write to encourage people, those things are long dead, but God wants us to wake up those things because they are very effective in preserving the fruit of the harvest. God wants us to revisit follow-up activities. At every level you find yourself, ask of your brother, ask of your sister. Let's follow up one another because the enemy is not resting. A lot of head crisis. There are people who are ashamed of their health condition. So they no longer come to the church. There are couples around you because they've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Every revivalist that come to church, they come up for altar prayers, they lay hands on them, they prophesy and say, by this time next year, you're going to carry your twins. That was 10 years ago. Many are becoming discouraged. Many are becoming, many are saying, God, why am I a laughing stock? Why must I come out to answer all that call? Every year they call for those for the fruit of the womb. That is, the productive health is in crisis. You need to seek them out and encourage them. There's a song my pastor used to say. Brethren, fight on, brethren. Brethren, fight on. The battle is not yet over. Fight on, brethren, fight on. God wants us to hold on. God wants us to press on. And as we do that, the Lord will bless His work. The Lord will bless His work. The Lord will bless His work. And you will prosper in that which God has called you to do. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. There are silent crises in the church among believers, health crises, financial crises, many fighting depression. Many fighting loneliness, many fighting off their sicknesses. Father, there is bad in Gilead. And the blood of Jesus, which is a real deal, is available. Father, we speak tonight all over the world that your power of healing will minister to every home, every heart, every ear. That God, your church, be healthy 
for the common Savior, for the common Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you for being part of this ministry. God bless for the part of us. By the special grace of God, from next week we'll be looking at different series. I will be starting with the power of forgiveness next week. Join us and you will be blessed. Keep praying with us. Pray along with us. As the Lord leads you to support the ministry, don't shy away from it. Our emails are there for you to reach out to us. Our phone number is there to reach out to us. We believe that God is doing something new in Nigeria, in sub saharan Africa, and all over the world. Thank you and God bless you. See you next Saturday. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's episode on The Word with Dr. Levin, presented by Global Altar Platform. Join us every Saturday for the undiluted teachings of The Word. Our social media channels are being displayed on the screen. God bless you. See you next week.